It's been very snowy here, like record-breakingly cold, and we're not really prepared for that level of cold here in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, if you happen to live somewhere like, oh, Minnesota, where it's below freezing approximately all of the winter, I'm sure that getting out of bed in the morning and clearing ice and snow off your car is something of a cool way to work out. But me? Well, outside of this channel, where I am totally a workaholic, I prefer working smarter, not harder. Exhibit A. Neat trigger here, you say. Most electric cars out there on the road today have some kind of remote start or preconditioning timer that you can set. It's one of the best perks about owning an EV. So what's impressive about that clip? Well, you'd be right. You can, although some are hidden behind the paywall that is a monthly connectivity subscription, but most, well, they're kind of dumb. And by that, I mean there's no intelligence built in. Some cars will let you program a daily timer to thaw out or cool down your car based on a preset schedule. Others, like my Chevrolet Bolt EV, just have a remote start-stop feature you can activate from your key fob or smartphone app on a per-use basis. But what if I told you that the little clip I just shared was the result of me not pressing the key fob, but rather an intelligent sequence of events tied into my home automation system, something that happened while I was still asleep upstairs. And what if I told you that that program will only run if a set specific criteria is met, and once you've got the basics working, the sky really is the limit. So today I'm going to look at how to integrate your EV's climate controls with Home Assistant, an open source and incredibly powerful home automation platform that can run on one of these, a Raspberry Pi. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it is a tiny, super cheap computer that has become synonymous with cool hobbyist levels of nerditude. And I'm a big fan. I mean, I've got a Raspberry Pi that sits on my home network and blocks all adverts from reaching my computer's web browsers. I have a Raspberry Pi running my 3D printer. And I even have a Raspberry Pi sitting in my chicken coop inside a 3D printed case so that I can keep an eye on who's laying eggs when. Yeah, my, my chicken coop has Wi-Fi and power over Ethernet. I, I really have no defense. Diversions aside though, these tiny little computers cost under 50 US dollars, much less if you go for a stripped down version and they can be run completely headless, meaning you don't have to keep a monitor, keyboard and mouse plugged in in order to run them. As for power requirements, well, under heavy load, they consume about five watts of power per hour. So in one day, even in worst case scenarios, you'd be looking at 120 watt hours of power, which is literally pennies per day. To get our automation running, we're going to need to install Home Assistant on our Raspberry Pi. Although confession time, even though we have lots of these in my home, I'm actually using our home media server, an old PC, which is running Home Assistant inside of a Docker on Unraid. Because we are a car channel, not a tech channel, I'm not going to give you a ground up walkthrough, but I've left some important links in the description below on how to install Raspberry and on your Pi, and then how to install Home Assistant, which is the program our automation routine uses. I'll also shove in there a video on Unraid in case you're coming at this from a, I have a family server that's already running and I could use that instead, like I used. Anyway, feel free to pause or bookmark and then go watch those first and then I'll meet you at my computer in the edit suite. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to assume that you have got Home Assistant running, you've hooked up whatever automations you happen to have for things like smart lights and, and smart appliances, so we can talk about cars. Now, exactly how you go about integrating your car's remote control into Home Assistant will depend on which car you have. Officially, Home Assistant lists a handful of integrations developed by the Home Assistant community. This includes the BMW Connected Drive System, the Nissan Leaf, Renault's EVs, and Volvo Connected Cars. But if you dig a little deeper and look into Hacks or the Home Assistant Community Store, there's a link below, you'll see integrations designed to integrate with Tesla, Volkswagen, Audi, Škoda, Kia, Hyundai, Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, Ford, and others, not to mention a whole host of home charging station technologies and protocols. Me? Well, because I own a Chevrolet Bolt, my path through to fully automated Nirvana on cold mornings involves just one more step. A free open source project called OnStar to MQTT and something called an MQTT broker. 
There is another rat hole of distraction possibility here, but to put it in a very simple way, MQTT is a special protocol that makes it easy for one device or program to communicate with another using a very easy to implement communication protocol. I like to think of it like an old school bulletin board where different programs or devices get to post their current status to special news feeds, or while other programs can publish their commands for other devices to follow using their own special news feed. But skip ahead if you don't own a Bolt. Because I don't want to make this video about the Bolt again, I'm going to keep my discussion of the OnStar to MQTT brokerage system to a minimum here. But in my case, I used Docker, which is another free program that allows you to create little tiny virtual playpans for other programs or Docker images to run inside. In my case, I created a Docker within Unraid to run the OnStar to MQTT, filled in the particulars for my car and put things like my username, password and VIN number into the car. And then the Home Assistant's MQTT integration was able to communicate between the OnStar, MQTT, Docker and my Home Assistant integration. Again, I will link to the resources I used in the description below. And because this one does require a little bit more knowledge of coding and keyboard foo, you may want to skip it if you're not familiar with tinkering and code. And to be clear, it took me two days to get this working because the OnStar to MQTT system didn't initially connect to my car until I'd driven the vehicle. If you just skipped ahead, welcome back. And if you are a Bolt owner scratching your head, I did for a couple of days. So feel free to pause here and go through the resources below, or you can ask me questions in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. We're now about to get to the fun bit, getting your car to do something when certain conditions are met. And for that, let's hop over to my home assistant install. Right now, you're seeing my home assistant installation and you're seeing the custom card that Michael Woods, the developer of OnStar 2 MQTT, detailed in his sample documentation. Right now, it's showing me that my car is plugged in and has about 80 point something percent state of charge and a range of about 212 kilometers, which is 131 miles, but it's very cold out. Just want to remind you of that. I need to figure out how to get it to display imperial measurements for distance, but... I've yet to do that. So let's go over the configuration window where we're going to set up our automations. Now at this point, remember whatever the integration is with your particular EV will mean that the commands and protocols might be slightly different. In my case, I'm obviously going to be using the Bolt EV commands that Michael provided, and I wrote some basic scripts off his documentation that you can see listed here. If your integration works just out of the box, you probably won't need to make any scripts like I did, but you'll see we've got some scripts here for starting and stopping the vehicle and locking and unlocking the doors. So let's head over to the automations tab and you'll see that there's an action here called defrost Artemis. That's the name of my car. So let's click on that and you'll see how I've created this particular bit of automation. The best way to think about automations is that they are like a set of instructions that your computer will keep on hand. They can be triggered by a single event or multiple events and once triggered, will do whatever you want them to. I've got one in my home, for example, that automatically dims the family room lights when I turn the TV on. For this particular one, I've created a trigger, the thing that starts the ball rolling, based on a particular time of day. I've picked 7.30 a.m., but you can pick whatever time you want or whichever day you want. I mean, Home Assistant is really pretty flexible in that way. Below the trigger, we have conditions. If the trigger is what starts the ball rolling, conditions are like a special final check to make sure that all the things you want are actually going to happen before the automation will run. In my case, I'm using Michael Fish, which is the family name for our Natatmo weather station, because Michael Fish is a weatherman, to examine the outside temperature. You won't get that joke unless you're British. Since there's no need to defrost the car if the temperature is actually above freezing, I'm basically doing a temperature check. I'm asking the computer to see if the outside temperature is below three degrees Celsius. I added a few degrees for buffering. And if it is, then I allow the automation to run. If it isn't below three degrees Celsius, the automation will just stop and the car does nothing. So here, while I'm using my home weather station, you could probably replace this with any publicly available temperature feed that you can view in Home Assistant. Now we've set a condition, 
you can set as many as you want, I'm going to get the car to start. And in my case, I'm calling a service, the script I wrote to make my car turn its climate control on. Remember, you probably don't need a script for your EV, but again, some DIY code sleuthing may be required. So consult the instructions for whatever EV integration you need to use. In some cases, it'll just literally be a drop down action. With the action set, the please start the car script, I've also opted to send myself a notification on my phone using the Home Assistant Notify feature. It literally sends a message to my phone, letting me know that the climate control has been turned on. Long term, I would love to integrate a calendar and routes aware planning system into this so that my car always has a nice preconditioned interior before I need to head out. And beyond that, my goal is to build a smart mirror or smart controller for my home so I can see what's going on with the whole home, including my cars. Additionally, because we have JuiceNet enabled NLX charging stations and an N phase solar panel inverter system, I'm looking to eventually get my charging station set up to only charge my cars when we're actively making power at home. So there you have it. Smarter EV preconditioning and a very low overhead. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like us to make more videos like this and don't forget to hit subscribe and that bell. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to $49 a month patron supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Jason Border, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, David Janakula, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Rahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Joseph Brouchers, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Raging Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Berners, Anthony Coates, Carl Hodgson, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin and Denny Hyde and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters Marcel Ward Reggie Watts Joe Bresney JP Fegerback, Will Grayland, Matthew Drobnak Christopher Lee Jones Paul Conway Ellery Hennersley and Ian if you're feeling left out don't worry you can join Patreon at the link below or show us your support through Bitcoin Kofi or by buying something from our swag store we have just lost about $4,000 in cancelled fees by deciding to pull out of CES in order to protect our team team and follow health advice and minimize risk. So any dollar that you could send would really help. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. <laughs>